I'm Ryan Powers. I'm a product marketing director at SignalFX, and I'm here today to talk to you about observability with Service Mesh. So a quick show of hands, how many folks in the crowd actually have heard of Service Mesh already? OK, so a good amount. Uh, this talk is for you. It is a 101 on what Service Mesh is, as well as the value you'll get from it, and one of the use cases, which is monitoring and observability. So everyone knows microservices are speeding up innovation. They're also becoming mainstream. This is from some research with IDC. By 2022, 90% of all applications will feature microservices architectures. But they're also increasing operational complexity across many different swim lanes, service discovery, observability, which we'll touch on more, troubleshooting, routing, and authentication. So it's become a service mess. All of these complexities from monitor environments, the interconnectivity between all of your microservices, how do you make sense of this? Well, Q Service Mesh. So I'm going to walk you through exactly what Service Mesh is. Essentially, Service Mesh is a happy marriage between proxy and policy. And we'll deep dive into what proxy and policy mean. Uh, but if you look at the definition online, uh, Service Mesh is an infrastructure layer for service-to-service -service communication essentially making your communication visible, manageable, and controllable. So let's walk through an illustrative example to really bring to bear what I mean by proxy and policy. So let's say a microservice wants to speak with another microservice. Well, traditionally, you could have them talk via IP address and domain name directly. But Service Mesh actually it provides a communication interface between the microservices. So the proxy is deployed as a sidecar along your microservices, deployed as a container. And these proxies allow for an interlay between your microservices. So what does that give you? It alleviates the headache that traditionally you would have of the microservices talking directly to each other, as well as out of the box, you're going to get service discovery of the microservices. So when they spin up, hey, I'm here, letting you know that uh, you actually have that service up and running. Beyond this, the data plane enables communication service or uh, common services without any changes to the application code. So the developer no longer has to worry about those operational complexities that I was talking about previously. So out of the box, you're going to get discovery, you're going to get observability, routing, authentication, and resiliency with the mesh. So your developer can focus on the app logic as opposed to all these operational concerns. So second, right, the, pro the proxy layer is controlled by the control plane. Now, this is commonly known as uh, a lot of folks are using Istio right now. Envoy is for the data plane. And so essentially, you get unified policy control over those communications between your microservices with the control plane. Do things like routing and, and load balancing with this. So recently announced, uh, generally available now, is AWS App Mesh. App Mesh is pretty great because you get all of those goodies that I was talking about with Service Mesh as a managed service with AWS now. So let's deep dive now into service mesh and monitoring, OK? Uh, talking to some of the PMs on the most popular open source technologies around service mesh is some of those managed services like App Mesh. The number one use case right now with the mesh is observability and monitoring. So truly believe that service mesh will consolidate monitoring. It's going to provide the proxy layer, which helps you standardize and consolidate all the telemetry across your containers, applications, and all of your infrastructure, and help relay that to your observability stack, whatever that may be, third-party monitoring vendors or open source technologies. At SignalFX, we are one of the SaaS monitoring vendors that you could leverage. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about how we work together with Service Mesh. But essentially, what we are, are is a real-time cloud monitoring platform, taking in traces, metrics, and events into our real-time streaming analytics engine and helping you real time, in real-time problem detect issues for some of those very highly ephemeral and short-lived environments like containers and serverless functions that can last minutes, if not even seconds or sub-seconds with some of these AWS Lambda uh, serverless functions. But not only when you problem detect, we'll help you go ahead and directly troubleshoot some of those issues with data science triaging. 
So through your microservices environment, where exactly is my root cause helping you cut down on mean time to resolution? And folks use this for various use cases, including infrastructure monitoring. So we have some out-of-the-box dashboards for AWS and other cloud providers, as well as application monitoring across your microservices environment or just service-oriented architectures in general, and digital business monitoring. We actually have some customers that uh, one specific customer will actually custom instrument their code to tell them how many sneakers they are selling per second on their sneakers app. So some of that business KPI stuff. So I talked to you a little bit about how Service Mesh can provide you some out-of-the-box monitoring and observability capabilities. Uh, and so you're probably wondering, okay, well, how does SignalFX come in this? How can you add some value on top of the mesh? Well, with a simple integration with Service Mesh, uh, SignalFX will provide you with out-of-the-box service monitoring and troubleshooting with minimal code changes to your actual application code, as well as full-stack observability, as I mentioned, across your infrastructure applications and even business KPIs. Uh, beyond that, I kind of mentioned about the directed troubleshooting with the outlier analyzer with data science triaging to actually get to your root cause of your issue way quicker. Uh, and a little bit different than a lot of the monitoring vendors you'll see here, we actually capture 100% of your transactions as opposed to a simple uh, sampling of that, which will often, if you're just sampling your transactions, miss a lot of outliers and anomalies within your, within your systems. So as I mentioned, uh, out of the box, um, this is actually from our uh, product screenshot. Uh, if you're leveraging service mesh and you send that data to SignalFX, you'll get a, a service map of all of your interconnections between your microservices out of the box and be able to see latency distribution as well as errors and request rates for some of your distributed tracing use cases. Uh, beyond that, we support diverse environments. So you he are here at AWS Summit, uh, but we do allow you to monitor any of your clouds if you're doing a multi-cloud strategy. And we have hundreds of integrations into the most popular cloud-native technologies, open source, um, as well as some of the vendors out there. Slicing and dicing your data instantly. So basically what I'm showing you here is that you could actually filter within our system and see a specific AWS availability zone and then even filter or group by further to see all the different microservices running in your system. So this is a heat map of all of your EC2 hosts across your environment. And this will instantly update in the system within seconds as you start to filter and slice and dice based on our differentiated streaming architecture. Powerful analytics. So we do provide you a lot of that out of the box uh, value for uh, faster time to value. Uh, and with the point and click of alert templates that we provide you, as well as some of the charts and dashboards that we provide you that are pre-built. But beyond that, you can customize the snot out of SignalFX and actually build your own charts and dashboards uh, and even alerts with our signal flow analytics uh, language, which is very Python-like. Now, hopefully, I teased that enough up to where you'll come to the, to the booth over here at 591 and actually you know, see a real live demo as well as you know, potentially ask any questions around service mesh. But I'm actually happy to, to field those right now if anyone has any uh, questions that I may be able to answer. Right here. How does uh, Amazon Service Mesh compare to some of the open source alternatives? So uh, AWS App Mesh actually leverages Envoy, which is the data plane. It's an open source technology. It comes out of Lyft, actually. Um, and Matt Klein, who developed it, uh, did a really great job. It's, a, it's an awesome uh, technology. And essentially what AWS does is provide that as a managed service. So you don't have to worry about any of the difficulties with upgrading your system and, and stuff of that nature. But it leverages some of the, or, or one of the most popular uh, open source service meshes. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned uh, minimal changes to your code. To be yep. able to use. Okay, so like what's minimal? So minimal is just a few lines of code. So um, if you're using a service mesh and you actually want to propagate uh, the, the communication between all of your services, if you're using open tracing, which is a pretty uh, big standard nowadays for distributed tracing, uh, we actually can take in open tracing compliant spans. Um, so basically what you would need to do is just add a few lines of code beyond service mesh to propagate the context to all the services so you can go ahead and get that service map. 